Okay, guys, here's the deal. I'm a nervous wreck right now. Adrenaline's pumping. I've killed many bull elk with a bow, but nothing compares to what we're doing today, guys. This is the real deal. It's game time. We gotta get focused, and we, we just gotta put our heart and soul into today. Concentrate on what we're out here trying to do, because this is, this is where it's at. It's opening day. I'm not gonna say what we're hunting yet, but it's opening day in Indiana. Whew, man, I'm shook up, guys. This is awesome. From an early age, I was obsessed with pursuing wildlife. The only way to learn was through trial and error or meeting new people and learning from them. Now my livelihood is completely based on the great outdoors. This show is about sharing new tips to become better outdoors men and women. Gaining knowledge from experts to improve our success in the hunting and fishing world. Pursuing new adventures and new experiences in the outdoors. This is Total Outdoor Pursuit. You know, one of the big things that we look forward to at the beginning of our hunting season every year is squirrel season. It's kind of the gateway to hunting season, so to speak. You know, here in Indiana, that's the first thing that starts it off. Well, with the exception of crows, of course, but most people don't count that. So when squirrel season comes around, you can bet your butt we are ready, thinking about it, ready for that opener. And one of the things that I've wanted to do for years is go for a float trip on a canoe hunting for squirrels. Hunting from a canoe, we'll be able to slip into areas that hardly ever get hit. We'll be able to see nests and you know, I mean, it's just gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be our little secret that gets us living it out before noon. So Landon and I hit several spots thinking we were just gonna get into them. The woods looked good from a distance, but the closer we got, we realized that they're nothing but cottonwoods and sycamores lining this river. And if you know anything about squirrels, they don't really care for cottonwoods and sycamores. They want to be in nut-bearing trees. They want to be in oaks and hickories and things like that. So I guess we'll have to keep pushing down the river until we finally get into the right habitat. Tip number one, try and find a place that the squirrels actually want to be in. Squirrels aren't huge fans of sycamores and cottonwoods. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Should I start a squirrel guiding business? For sure, man. Do day hunts. Oh, I, this is amazing. Like I said, tip number one, if you're going to hunt squirrels, go where the squirrels are at. That's it. It's only a matter of time until we hit a good stand of oaks and hickories. Good sign, guys. We've been looking all, all morning for these, and we found them. They're right here. Our first sign of nuts. It's a pair of nuts right here. They're not in the best shape, but that means there's squirrels here, guaranteed. That's yesterday's cut right there, guys. Fresh sign. All right, we finally found an area that does have some oaks, walnuts, nice mix of hardwoods here. There's sign on the ground that the squirrels have been active, so we're just gonna post up, hang tight, let things cool down for a little bit. Give it probably about 10 minutes to cool down, and then we're gonna hit the, the old squirrel call. If anything was watching us and got spooked, they could be sitting up there frozen. We settle down for a while, then hit that call. It makes them think that everything's back to normal when we get them moving again, so. Hopefully we're about on it. This is opening day of squirrel season. I mean, this is something that we've been looking forward to all year. I come up with a great idea. We'll float the river. Put us through all this great habitat. Oh, uh, we know it can't be over hunted because it's the first morning of squirrel season. We're the first people here. But it's nine o'clock now. And I have a feeling that they're about to get active. Marty's SquirrelGuideService.com was a thought I had on the back burner. <laughs> I just shove it right off the back burner right into the trash. Well, I'm not going to give up on the squirrel hunting dreams just yet. Just keep moving forward and looking up.
into the trees. The white-tailed deer has a sense of smell 10,000 times more powerful than a human, and every air current educates them on their surroundings. We use sprays, liquids, and solids to cover up our scent and attract whitetails. Until today, we have never actually let the air molecules of wind determine the success of our hunt. Introducing WindScent, a patent-pending technology that attracts and bonds with the air molecules around you, covering your scent and releasing scent attractant that lasts longer and travels farther. WindScent offers custom intervals for your hunting conditions to release scent as often as every 90 seconds. WindScent is rechargeable and reusable. WindScent lasts up to 40 hours on a single charge and up to 20 hours on one vapor cartridge. WindScent's proprietary lineup of vapor hunting scent preserves genuine yearn and attractants. The combination of a superior scent product emitted on continuous intervals as an air vapor gives the hunter the highest potential odds of harvesting a mature buck. Check out Total Outdoor Programming on YouTube for more great tips and tactics on hunting, fishing, camping, grilling, trophy field care, taxidermy tips, and even more. Plus, you can watch full episodes of Total Outdoor Pursuit and even extras, outtakes, and bloopers off the cutting room floor. Come on, Rock! You bum! You bum, Rock! Here they come! Here they come! Are they? Are Be sure to subscribe and join in on the conversations. <laughs> Check it out at youtube.com backslash Total Outdoor. You can get a hold of the Total Outdoor Pursuit and Total Outdoor Programming team through social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates on where we're at and what we're chasing. We love hitting the road and trying new things. If you excel at any type of hunting or fishing, whether you're a professional guide or just average Joes like us, and you would like to be part of an episode teaching us what you know, send us an email at totaloutdoorpursuit at gmail.com and maybe you'll be in a future episode. Well, so far our squirrel opener is off to a really slow start, but we'll just keep trying. All right, we just struck one about ready to give up and we hit the squirrel call had one barking back and now we can see him up there tail swishing so Marty squirrel guide service may still be back on the back burner laying flat as a pancake on that tree. Wasn't really giving us too much to shoot at. Just a little, about one shot at the head and that was about it, but took off and that's one of the hard things. Early season like this, so many leaves, it's just hard to keep an eye on them where they're going. The other problem, early season, bugs. With Elena and I really struggling to seal the deal and some squirrels, let's just go ahead and roll a more successful video from our Total Outdoor Programming Library. I like this piece of camouflage you got here. What piece of camouflage? This piece of camouflage right here. What is it? On your hat. And you take camouflage to the max, Chris. So if you're new to squirrel hunting, there's a few things that hopefully you can learn from this video. Number one, make sure that you're always listening just as much as you're looking. That's one of the biggest ways that we find these squirrels is not by seeing them move. All the leaves are so dense, you're not going to even see them up there in those treetops. We're hearing them before we see them. First off, you want to listen for chewing, which is... We'll play some of the chewing sound that they make. The second sound would be the bark.
it's important to distinguish the difference between that and birds. You'll hear some birds that sound really close to that, but you don't want to be chasing birds all day or you're going to be in trouble. back to the same spot again. Damn, he's squirrely little dude. Yeah. See him coming down there. There he's on that branch there. We got him. Once you locate them, you got to take your time and ease underneath there and try and get as close as you can. That's another hard thing too. When you're using 22 caliber like this, you need to get pretty close. You can't just spray them like you would with a shotgun. Just try and use trees and cover to work your way through and make it in towards where they're at. And uh, anytime they start acting like they're on alert, just go ahead and hold up, wait, let them get back to doing their normal thing and then go ahead and proceed. Something my grandfather actually showed me many, many years ago. Uh, if a squirrel ever gets behind a tree and you can't get him to come out and all you can see is his head, you know, most hunters wear a hat and he won't come out from behind that tree, just take your hat, throw it on the other side of the tree and chances are it'll bring that squirrel around the other side and it gives you a, a pretty clear shot. We wanted to design a broadhead that was different, that was tougher. A broadhead that didn't sacrifice penetration due to cutting diameter. A fixed and expandable broadhead with field point accuracy. What we came up with was more than we ever imagined. Three choices, one devastating result. Bipolar broadheads, truly the best of both worlds. My entire life, as long as I can remember, I've been completely obsessed with the great outdoors. Anytime I could get in the woods to hunt and fish, I was taking advantage of it. So because of my passion for the great outdoors, I've decided to create CommandoOutdoors.com. We're doing product reviews, we're doing tips and tricks and all kinds of neat strategies just to help everybody become better outdoorsmen. So if you're like me and you're completely obsessed and passionate with the great outdoors, it's time for you to go Commando. Check out Total Outdoor Programming on YouTube for more great tips and tactics on hunting, fishing, camping, grilling, trophy field care, taxidermy tips, and even more. Plus, you can watch full episodes of Total Outdoor Pursuit and even extras, outtakes, and bloopers off the cutting room floor. Come on, Rock! You're a bum! You're a bum, Rock! Here they come! Here they come! What are they? Be sure to subscribe and join in on the conversations. <laughs> Check it out at youtube.com backslash Total Outdoor. Shadow Hunter Professional Grade Hunting Blinds. 
innovation that lets you hunt like a pro. Proudly made in the American heartland, our systems elevate you to the perfect vantage point and are engineered for your total comfort and concealment. Built to a higher standard, the customizable Shadow Hunter system keeps you on top of your game. Start hunting like a pro today. Find your dealer at shadowhunterblinds.com. Back to our 2017 squirrel canoe float hunt. Let's push further down river. I blew that one. Trophy black squirrel. My first time I've ever looked down the barrel of the 22 at a black squirrel. Had him right there, dead to rights, 15, 20 yards. I'd say probably the same distance I was sighting in the gun. Missed him twice. The only excuse I have is I didn't take the time to get a solid rest. Well, we'll go see if we can find another one. Let's just cut to another Total Outdoor Programming video. This is Total Outdoor Programming. This is the PS Ult. Uh, it is a model B10 and made in Illinois. So it's a bellow squirrel call that works with pressure. You don't have to worry about blowing anything. If I think that the squirrels are over in this direction because there's a bunch of oak trees or something like that, hickory trees, I'll try and keep the call turned from them just a little bit so they're not watching the movement of the call actually going off, um, but it's still gonna project their way. So all you have to do is just tap it. Real simple to use, I just tap it on my side or a tree stump, anything like that. You can even do it on your hand. But the main important thing is the cadence of the squirrel call. If you spend any amount of time out in the woods at all, you've probably heard these squirrels sounding off. Uh, they've got a really unique cadence, and it starts off kind of aggressive and then tapers down. It's fast at the beginning and then tapers down. Loud at the beginning, tapers down. That's how they typically do it. And they take a little pause and then they'll hit it again. So it's... So it always starts off... Everything starts off kind of high and angry and mellows out a little bit. The longer they do it, uh, they're trying to alert other squirrels that there's danger nearby. Once they start to feel like the danger's left the area, they'll start getting quieter and quieter and it'll start going to a... It'll really tone down quite a bit, almost to the point that it just kinda seems like they're just doing it out of habit. And then eventually they'll finally say, okay, danger's passed, I'm gonna stop. And at that point, the other squirrels will say, okay, whatever that squirrel saw that was making him nervous, uh, it's left the area, it's okay for us to come back out, start doing what we were doing before. And that settles them down and allows you to see where they're at and let them get more active. And hopefully that'll allow you to get a good shot or be able to sneak that last 25, 50 yards to get underneath to be able to get a good shot. So again, start off with an aggressive sound and you're going all the way at the absolute max volume of the call. Make sure everything tapers down and then do that for 20, 30 seconds. Um, as you get towards the end of that 30 seconds, you wanna start letting it die down even more. Just keep letting it die down until finally you hit a point, maybe about a minute is how long I'll call from start to finish, uh, where it actually just completely dies down to a silence. 
and then just sit back and wait, let them go back to doing their own things and get ready for your shot. Seriously, can it really be that hard to film a squirrel hunt? Let's just try one more time and see if Landon and I can get it done. I think we should get closer. Yeah, it really can be that hard to film a squirrel hunt, especially in all those leaves. The uh, float squirrel hunt has not been that great of a success so far, mostly because of our own failures. But now we get the fun part of trying to ford the old rapids coming up here. So hopefully uh, we make it through that all right. Oh, it's shallow here. Oh, oh, oh. Hard. Is it? Yeah. Ah. Okay, there we go. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Oh. Hold, hold on. Oh. We uh, we have rocks to the right, rocks to the left. We have rocks in front of us and rocks behind us. <laughs> Play another video. So when it comes to the shot, one of the really important things is to make sure that you get a good solid rest. I actually carry a bipod with me. Makes it really handy to get in there. If you don't have a tree right next to you, you can use those bipods to help out. And one of the other things that you can do is a flat prone on your back position. It feels kind of odd, but practice it. You lay flat on your back, use those shooting sticks to lean back towards you and kind of create a 45 degree angle between your gun and the ground. And those will help brace it. And then what I do is I just kind of pull tight onto the sling and lock that right in my shoulder. At that point, my shoulder, my arm, my elbow, everything is just solid, tight to the ground, and it hardly wiggles at all. Solid rest, if it's a tree, shooting sticks, your knee, anything like that, it's extremely important to make sure that you get a good solid rest on these little tiny targets when all you've got is a 22 caliber bullet heading at them. One thing you want to remember when you're hunting with a rifle or a shotgun, you don't want to pull the trigger when you have the uh, 
the game that you're shooting at in your sights, what you want to do is you want to squeeze the trigger very, very lightly until the gun goes off itself. It's also important to make sure when you put your finger on the trigger, try and get right in that little crook of your first joint there as opposed to out here because it's hard to keep consistent pressure if you're spacing it somewhere out in the furthest tip of your finger. If you've got it right in that joint, it's going to be fairly consistent every single time you pull, so you're going to be able to gently ease that trigger back nice until it goes off. So these ones will be heading to Chris's frying pan. He'll be eating them and I'll be taking the skins to mount and we'll make good use of these. A lot of fun. Hopefully you guys learn something from these tips if you're new to squirrel hunting. And uh, as always, keep subscribing. We'll keep more videos coming for you. Damn ABD. Yeah, so the 2017 squirrel hunt float trip didn't quite go the way we had planned. But hey, you know what? With a little bit more research and another try next year, I bet we'll get it figured out. And that's the important thing, to never walk away from your dreams. You got about four inches to play with right here. <laughs> you should be used to that. That's what she said. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Whose idea was this anyways? <laughs>